During their eight-day state visit, King Birendra and the Queen of Nepal are received in Bangalore, India's garden city. For all its trees and roses, Bangalore is a highly sophisticated industrial center. The royal visitors have a look around the HMT watch factory. From the recording of time to its conquest, the supersonic possibilities of Hindustan aeronautics. Aviation is of particular interest to a landlocked country like Nepal. His Majesty shows keen interest in the research work being carried on at Panthnagar, for both countries are predominantly agricultural. In a joint communique, Nepal and India reaffirm their bonds of friendship and pledge themselves to work for a durable peace and good neighborliness in the subcontinent. Waving rolling pins, a symbol of woman power, about 2,000 angry housewives march to the Secretariat in Bombay demanding fair prices for essential commodities. In spite of a brotherly appeal for cooperation by the Chief Minister, the housewives resolve that the battle will continue. Tragedy in Rajasthan. Chief Minister Barkatullah Khan passes away in Jaipur after a massive heart attack. He was 53 years old. Known to friends and to the public as Pyaremia, Barkatullah Khan played a series of important roles in the life of his state and the nation. He served on the Indian delegation at the United Nations. He also represented the Prime Minister on a tour of North African countries to explain the crisis which led to the liberation of Bangladesh. He was, in the words of Mrs. Gandhi, first and foremost, a humanist. The Prime Minister inaugurates a tribal agency in the Keonjhar district of Orissa. The agency will look to the welfare of 477 tribal villages. The government is firmly determined to bring all backward communities into the mainstream of national life. India stages her first international tennis Grand Prix. Well-known players from all over the world gather in New Delhi for a feast of tennis. Mal Anderson of Australia meets top-seeded Vijay Amritraj in the final. This is a titanic five-set, 200-minute battle in which fortunes fluctuate. After taking the first set 6-4, Vijay loses the next two sets, 5-7 and 8-9. In the fourth set, Vijay tightens up his game to win 6-3. Two games all, and now for the final set, a cliffhanger if ever there was one. Soon, it's 7 all. And then, it's eight all. The battle continues 
and it's 9 all. Having broken through in the 19th game, Vijay holds his service to win the second match at 11-9. In Assam and Bengal this year, the price of jute has been falling. To check this trend, the Jute Corporation of India has entered the market to mop up surpluses. An attempt is being made to give a fair price to jute growers. The corporation is also secured from the railways an assurance to handle jute on a priority basis. Apart from transportation, a major problem is warehousing. The jute industry and the corporation must now work together to overcome this difficulty. Here is a somewhat wormy item of news. Until five years ago, the people of Manipur did not know the potential of the wild tussar trees growing in profusion around them. A government research program has been so successful that there is a phenomenal demand for worms and cocoons. Manipur Tassa silks have now entered the market, thanks to a once neglected tree and the industrious worm, both promising plenty. Archaeologists dig up history in the Tuen Sang district of Nagaland. Because of the thick jungle and heavy rainfall, it will take another season or two to explore the site comprehensively. But the specimens so far unearthed indicate that Neolithic man lived here more than 3,000 years ago. This is one of the richest finds in eastern India and a major archaeological contribution to the history of man. A super thermal power station is born at Santaldi in Bengal. The first 120 megawatt unit has been commissioned in record time. The total output will be 480 megawatts, an answer to the chronic power shortage in Bengal, serving both industry and the rural areas. <laughs> 